Hey guys, welcome back to the Cullico YouTube channel in the home of Fabricademy. In today's video, we're gonna be welding 20 gauge 035 wall 304 stainless steel exhaust megaphones. As you know, 20 gauge is quite thin. I work with it a lot in the motorsports exhaust world where I'm building a lot of products. So hopefully after today's video, you guys feel comfortable welding this thin material as I'm gonna share everything that I know and that'll include machine settings, equipment, and techniques to get beautiful, consistent welds on this 20 gauge material. This specific product here is a megaphone reverse cone design for motorcycle racing. It started off is a flat 2D pattern that I modeled on CAD and had water jetted. This is 035 304 stainless steel. I then rolled the pattern into a straight cone and then I went in and made a couple pie cuts to put a turn in the cone as this portion is going to turn around the side of the bike and then of course added the reverse cone which will go into the muffler that I'll build later. So today we're going to weld up these seams so I won't waste any more time Let's dive in. We're gonna start off with a proper cleaning. I use acetone and a white rag. That way when you're wiping this stuff down, any dirt or grime that contaminate your weld will show up on the white rag. So just wipe it down until your rag stays clean and that way we know our weld will be free of contaminants. The next thing I wanna talk about is equipment. I'm using a Miller Dynasty 210 TIG welder. Yes, the Miller Dynasty is a great product, but the machine does not make the welder. So whatever TIG welder you have at home, I'm I'm confident will work just fine. However, if you are in a position where you're looking for a new machine, I would recommend the Miller Dynasty series. Next, I will be using a number 16 welding cup with a 16th inch 2% seriated tungsten sharpened to a point. If you guys need a gas lens, comment below. I get these products made and you can get one through me. I'll be using 035 super missile filler rod. I just wanted to give you a little close up of my torch setup here with the number 16 gas lens and the 16th inch tungsten. I usually pull it out about 5 eighths of an inch. Next, I wanna take you through all the machine settings and the gas pressures. Of course, we want our polarity set on DC. For this thin material, we're gonna be right at 30 amps. That's important. We'll run about 1.2 seconds pre-flow. That's the gas flowing before the arc strikes. And then we'll be running about 12 seconds of post-flow. That is the gas flow after you lift the pedal to cool and shield that weld. As far as gas pressure, we're gonna be running right at about 35 CFH through that nozzle. All right, we're getting closer to welding here, guys. I got my helmet gloves. It's always nice having a spiffy new pair of gloves. I want to remind you guys to always back purge if you have that capability. And if you do not, I recommend getting set up to do so. I just have pucks that I machined out of aluminum with quick release fittings on this end to attach and detach the line. And then I just seal it off with aluminum foil. And as you can see on this side, I also have it sealed off with foil. And I'll just take my filler rod and poke a couple holes in here to allow that gas to escape. It needs to be able to bleed out. You don't want it completely sealed off. Otherwise, it'll try and push back on the underside of that weld as you're going. If you have any questions about the back purge process or anything we've covered up to this point, don't hesitate to drop it in the comments below. I'll respond as quick as I can. All right, guys. Let's start welding. All right, so I just welded a couple seams quick to kind of get warmed up. We'll do the next one together. Before we do that, I just wanted to run through a couple important things. When it comes to welding this thin material, the best piece of advice that I can give you is make sure your amperage is set perfectly. And what do I mean by that? I'm gonna set that machine to 30 amps, the perfect amperage. And that's gonna allow me to completely slam the pedal, be full throttle and not have to worry about the amperage blowing through the material. Now I'm a big advocate for this and I've talked about it on a lot of previous videos. When TIG welding, I want you guys to find that perfect optimal amperage that allows you to slam the foot pedal all the way down and then start ripping. What I don't want you to do is have your machine set up in the amperage where you gotta float the pedal half throttle like this and run it like a thermostat. That doesn't work. I know guys do that, 
I do it sometimes, but that's not a practice that you want to get involved with. I've been welding for a very long time, and I promise this will help you guys. It's all in the name of eliminating variables. There's already enough going on when you're TIG welding with your torch and your filler and your pedal. The last thing you want is to be running your pedal half throttle and having your puddle pulse like this and not be consistent. This is a practice that I try to carry over to all forms of TIG welding. It could be chromoly frame welding or thicker exhaust material like 18 gauge or 16 gauge. I'm always trying to hit that target amp. So this is a valuable piece of data that I'm giving you in this video. You're welcome and you can thank me later. Okay, I'm at max pedal. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. Always count for a good consistent rhythm and cadence. helps with the look of your weld. Max pedal. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, so our first seam is done. So as you're welding, guys, you're probably gonna have your tungsten off the material about an eighth inch or so. And try your best when you're running it through to keep it as perpendicular as possible. If anything, a little bit of a lead angle is okay. You know, if you're perpendicular, a little bit of a lead angle is good and try and do 30 to 40 dips per run let's weld this second seam All right, guys, here's a couple 20 gauge welded seams. All right, guys, if you're looking to improve your TIG welding or your fabrication skills, I really encourage you to check out my online school and community called Fabric Academy. Inside, you'll find in-depth TIG welding and fabrication courses. In the TIG welding mastery course, I take you through everything that I know in my 10 plus years of TIG welding experience and what I know from the motorsports and aerospace world. You'll get detailed data and knowledge on equipment, settings, techniques, strategies, and what it takes mentally to be a great TIG welder. So thank you for watching this video. I hope to see you on the next one. And if you're interested in Fabricademy, I'll put the link below. See you later.